Okay, so right now I want to discuss how to improve the posterior glide of the femur in the acetabulum. So when is this indicated? Well, if someone comes in and they have like some anterior hip impingement stuff going on, so maybe pain with hip flexion, hip internal rotation, and adduction, um, either separately or combined, then I'm thinking, what is going on? What's causing this to happen? Is it because of the, where the femur is already positioned in the capsule? It doesn't have as much movement? Maybe. So I do a couple of extra tests to kind of rule in whatever my suspicions are and then go from there. Um, it's very often that part of the problem is that they don't have that the um, femoral posterior glide going on as you're going into hip flexion. So if you're already sitting forward, if it's not gliding back, you're kind of at the end of the joint. So when you go into flexion, I guess you go this way. So say that this is the, um, the joint, if it's already forward, you're gonna be hitting the end of your range of motion very quickly. So that's why that posterior glide is so important in order to prevent any sort of impingement, femoral acetabular impingement, labral pathology. Um, the easiest way that I can teach this for people is to do a self-mobilization. No equipment is needed for this one, and I will show you how. Oh, and also, in addition to having pain in hip flexion, adduction, and internal rotation, you might also have and see a lot of restrictions in that range of motion. So, and that also means if you're restricted in, in the range of motion, you probably are limited in terms of strength and stability in those positions as well. So, um, really important to fix this in order to improve that that capsular glide and that accessible workspace in the hip for your hip mobility. Okay, this is the exercise. So, you're, if I'm going to be mobilizing my right hip, that's the one that I want in the back because everything's going to be shifting backwards. So, for this exercise, it's really important that this back leg goes into external rotation so it opens up the hip capsule into more of an open pack position. It's also important that we're in this quadruped position so we're not actively having to uh, try to pull our hip into hip flexion and then that would turn on your hip flexor and then this mobilization would not be nearly as effective. So right now I have all the pressure on like my kneecap and then my left knee is blocking my right leg for going forward so obviously there's no way to go forward because I'm going to be shifting back and what I'm going to do is shifting back and then thinking about drawing this femur up towards the ceilings kind of diagonally so I'm not going straight up this way I'm taking this hip and going that direction and then sometimes I'll hang out here sometimes I'll go side to side I can really easily mobilize my hip and I can relax quickly. A lot of people that maybe have been stuck in that like anterior position for a while, they might have a harder time. It might require a little bit more time in this position and it might require, require more repetitions um, in order to relax. So if you are very flared up and if your femur tends to be sitting way more anteriorly, do this constantly. I would do it like, three times a day until we can get that capsule to start moving. All right, so I usually have people do about 15 to 20 rocks, front to back, side to side, kind of just hang out in this position. Feel that femur moving, shifting around. Just sit back, play with your ankles. You just want that femur to go that direction so you know that it's going posteriorly. Um, so after you do that, you can always reassess, see if you have increased range of motion and flexion, um, IR and adduction, as well as maybe le uh, less pain or less pinching and impingement in those positions too. So um, this is really quick to help. You can also do a banded mobilization. You can do it in the same position. Um, if so if I have a band on my hip here, it's pulling my hip posteriorly and I would still be in external rotation, and then I would still be sitting back and then kind of play around with my like side to side positions, same as before. You can also do this standing. So if I was standing for this exercise, I would have some sort of weight 
weight, a band here, and a weight pulling down, pulling into that like posterior position. And I might put myself into a little bit of ER as well here. It just depends on how much I can relax and how much I'm actually getting out of it. I feel like the quadruped positions are the best to start mobilizing the hip in this position and get your body to relax because this is a hard position to relax in, even though this is way more functional um, for most people, but most people have their pain in deep squats. So keep that in mind. Hope this helps.